In this video, I want to see if I can use all Janice's aliases, you know, the usual suspects. Let's see if I can get from A to Z. Recently I have read a passage that speaks of the work by Macrobius from his work Saturnalia in which he ascribes Janus essentially as being the composite whole of Apollo and Dinah who is Artemis, stating the, the pro providence of Apollo and Dinah over the doorway of the streets and streets. This makes quite a bit of sense to me and is something I have been leaning towards. I have read two descriptions of Janus, two-faced somewhat an iconic form one describes him as being a youthful face and bearded face representing youth and age thus the passage of time and the doorway of which he oversees the other descriptor states that the two faces are gender opposites one masculine and feminine this is just from a little bit of a passage just showing you that someone is talking about the connection between the two Definition of Bifrons, having two foreheads, having two sides, two faced with or having two faces. This is also, what's funny is that there is a Bifrons demon. And you just saw a few of the pictures. Here's just come up a quick description. Bifrons is a demon described in a demono demonological grimoires, the Lesser Key of Solomon and the Pseudodemonica Daemonum as well as being mentioned in the Dictionary in Infernal. In these works he is described as an Earl of Hell who literally appears as a monster before adopting a more human form. So as you can see from the carving, um, it's Baphomet stone sculpture and it's in Portugal, 15th century. Isn't it a mind blower when you see that Baphomet is Janus? And what you're seeing here is just more representations and how it's changed throughout the eons. I have to say that uh, the pentagram at the bottom is wrong. It's a pentacle. The pentacle has the circle, not a pentagram. So just have to, you know, say, <laughs> say that before anyone else says anything. But as you can see, they change vastly. Bifrons was also the names given to the Baphomet allegedly worshipped by the Knights Templar and which description was a statue with two heads surely inspired by the Roman god Bifrons meaning two heads one looking towards the left to tell the past and the other looking towards the right to tell the future all by all this by means of the power of a demon there were other suppositions on the figure of Baphomet the god Janus is the pre-Christian pagan Roman god of gates and doors and UI beginnings and endings and hence represented with a double faced head each looking in each opposite direction so there you go baphomet is janice
Cole Sands is an Etruscan deity known from two inscriptions and a variety of iconographical material which includes coins, statuettes and a sarcophagus. Cole Sands is usually rendered as a male deity with two faces and at least two statuettes depicting him of being found in close association with city gates. This is Cerninus in Notre Dame, it's on the pillar of the boatman. Janus is known as the original boat builder. Obviously here is Janus with horns. Here's the pillar in question that I was just talking about. And here's just a little bit just to show you. The horn god is the evocative name, a 20th century melding of several ancient images of gods such as Cerninus, Hearn the Hunter, Pan, Dionysus, Janus and the Green Man. Not much exists in writing and the oral tradition has been lost. So the modern pagans worship the male energy force of winter as the horn god. He is the great father like Janus is Ionus Pater, Ionus the father. The lord of winter with sover sovereignty of the male aspects and creation of fertility. He has the power and creation and destruction. He harvests the land of dead animals and cures for the land in the cold dark of winter. While the horn god may be the modern uh, derivation of ancient images, the ancients and the powerful life and death force her uh, represents remains present in the world and in our lives. Diana and Dionysus, the most common names found associated with the old religion in Italy are Diana and Dionysus. Dionysus is the nature god associated with the woods, herds, fertility and so on. He was presented in the rites of Diana at the sacred grove of Anemi. He is also known as Verbius and is linked to the title of Rex Nemorenis. Oaks were sacred to Dionysus which were present in the groves of Nemi. It seems likely that in time he was also associated with the god Janus. Janus was a, a god of doorways, portals and beginnings in general. In this aspect, Janus was a guardian who kept non-initiates away from the mystery traditions. He carried a whip and a rod, which could usher in or drive away. Dionus, as the guardian Rex Numerenis, is easily linked to Janus in the subject, in this aspect. In the Aridan tradition, Diana and Diana would be two parts of the divine great spirit. Usually, Dionysus is visualized as a stag god, like Cerninus, or a man with antlers, again, Cerninus. He is also be associated with the forest god, known as Kern, or no Cern, or Hern. Different lands, similar story. Dionysus is the consort of Diana, even in her chast aspect. Here they are more like brother and sister. In other aspects, they are lov lovers and so on. Historical references to the cult of Diana and Dionysus. El Goa is the Orisha of crossroads, doorways and gates. He is the messenger of the gods. No Orisha can be contacted except through him. His dress and conflicting mannerisms reflect the double-sided nature. He is sometimes depicted with two faces, especially in European art. El Goa is also the guardian of the doorways between the earthly and divine realms. He has also been compared to, uh, compared to the Greek god Hermes, with whom he shares many attributes and, and to the Hindu Giresh. In Brazil, he is sometimes equated with Baphomet, and his symbol is a pitchfork in Santera. His colours are black and red, and he's associated with St. Martin de Porres. So there's another interesting link, another one, Alagua. Foculus and there's not many pit with this hardly no pictures on this god the entity we know as Janus this form in this form he is protecting the integrity of the door 
Now, I, I ask you guys, as you can see, this is a picture of Faunus. The horned god is the Roman version of Pan. Now, Janus is also called the horned god Cernanus and many other things. So, are these one in the same? You can see, to me, it's identical. And I've talked about this in a video called Island of the Gods. Now, there is another image of Faunus. And as you can see, he has the mask. Who is this? Is this showing you the Janus aspect on how he wields two faces? I'll leave it up to you. I just thought it was interesting and I had to include it. Why Ganesh is called Janus of India, philologist William Jones in 1785 saw shocking similarities between Duanka, Ganesh and Janus, the two-headed Roman god. The likeness between the two was so strong that he referred Ganesh as the Janus of India, both for the first to be worshipped at the beginning of any auspicious occasion. So this is taken from an old video, obviously you can see Hecate of the Threshold. Hecate can spell so many different names with a K or a C. What's a threshold? So for anyone who doesn't know what a threshold is, that's what Hecate is god of. It's a strip of wood or a stone forming the bottom of a doorway and crossed in entering a house or a room. That's why they're both connected. But it doesn't just lie there. Um, the reason I included Hecate as being part of Janus is because of all, all similarities. Remember, Janus is just a Roman name. The entity behind it is what a mess you could talk about. Proculus, Diodocus, the successor, a poet, a philosopher, wrote to him, uh, to Hecate and Janus. And this is how it goes. I'm not going to sing it, guys. <laughs> I'll just read it out. Proculus, him to Hecate and Janus. Hail, many named mother of the gods, whose children are fur hail, mighty Hecate of the threshold. And hail to you also, forefather Janus, imperishable Zeus, hail to Zeus, Zeus most high. Yep, he is Zeus too. Shape the course of my life with luminous light, and make it laden with good things. Drive sickness and evil from my limbs, and where my soul rages about worldly things. Deliver me purified by your soul stirring rituals. Yes, lend me your hand, I pray. And reveal to me the pathways of divine guidance that I long for. Then shall I gaze upon the precious light whence I flee the evil of our dark origin. Yes, lend me your hand, I pray. And when I were well, sorry, and when I'm weary, bring me to the heaven of piety with your winds. Hail many named mother of gods, whose children are fur, hail mighty Hecate of the threshold. And hail to you also far forth father Janus, imperishable Zeus. Hail to you Zeus most high. And that is from Proclus Diodocus. And it's obviously a prayer, a hymn to Hecate and Janus. Why do it to both if they are not integrated, they are not one in the same. They are the same entity. Hence why I want to do this video today, just to show how many entities are tied to Janus. The two-faced rendering of Vermeer is a Roman variation in Vulcan Janus, the god of transitions and journeys, of gates, doorways and passageways and beginnings and endings, and of duality. Janus himself is usually depicted befront two heads, with one facing looking to the future and the one to the past. As with Hermes, Janus is a mediator between different worlds and its respect. In this respect, the Janiform Hermia represent opposing and complementary relationships such as old and young, divine and mortal, good and follower, male and female, husband and wife. Mm. 
And you see now it's Ionos, which is Janice in Latin. Bit of a cheat this one, but <laughs> I had to because he comes by many names as Ionos Pater, meaning Janus father. So I'm just going to still read out, even though I've seen this many times. In ancient Roman religion and myth, Janus, Janos, Latin Ionos, pronounced Janos, is a god of beginnings, gates, transitions, time, dual, duality, doorways, passages, and endings. He's usually depicted as having two heads. So there you go, Janus, Father Ionos. This one is Eyes and Mud, and he's in Sumerian or Arcadian. You can see him to the right in the corner, two heads. And I'll show you this before as well. So this is pretty easy one, Enki and Azimud, or Uzmu as he is known. Not many people know what he actually did. But what they have guessed is that he was the two-faced god with function as a minister or a messenger to the god Enki. So there you go, you have I. Guys, this is one of the more... more viewer friendly Im uh, images and websites that i could find just to show you the name janikos janice <laughs> the god it keeps on giving <laughs> um so this is just about janikos also as i just said janice the real janice janikos is his name it can be said what history is written in the eye of the beholder and most of the so-called first-hand accounts of the witches' sabbat, which is linked to the obviously what we're talking about, the triad of witches in Italy, were written from the viewpoint of witch hunters and not crucially by witches. The name Janicot is the name that the witches of the Basque called the horn god of fertility. The Basque is, I think it's the Pyrenees in Spain, which straddles with France. So in the Basque region, they call Janice the uh, Janicot. Um, he's also called Bassa, Joan, or Jonis, which means Sata. Sata is, as you can see from the image, you can see, just like Pan, which is an also another name, as you saw from before. So when we're talking now of pandemics and pandemics, it's about Janice. So not only has Josh truly showed you the reason behind the face mask is to make us two, three faces like Janice. The first death of the, the pandemic was in December. Uh, mention of it was in December. That was for the, the, the vow. And then the January was the first so-called death. So it's all connected to Janice, even the word pandemic. How about that, guys? <laughs> So I'll carry on now. Obviously, this is just a site. It's not my own work. Uh, I don't agree with absolutely everything, but it's it's information and it's how you t want to take this information. Now, satyrs were always associated with the goddess of the craft, Lilith, and with other goddesses such as Diana, which is another Dianus. Pan, of course, is very similar attributes to Janicot and is traditionally viewed as appearing as a satyr, half goat, half human in form. Uh, the Basque word for God is Janakoa or Jankoa. The Basque people speak a unique language, different to any other European language, and as they strongly opposed the fascist dictator Franco during the Civil War and were supported the forces of liberation from tyranny and depression, they have been discriminated against by the Catholic-sponsored government and their language prohibited in schools and newspapers. Um, it is easy to see why the Spanish Catholic Church got the early preconceptions of the mythical devil from. There is no detailed description of the devil in any biblical writings, and it is only in the modern mass media that added a red colour tail and pitchfork with swirling red cape, toozled her, and let add a co-equal and prosecuting attorney to the patriarchal god. But like I said, <laughs> we, we know all this. Um, so why did... They choose Janicot or Pan to be chosen archetype of the devil character, horns, fertility associated with witchcraft and feminine power. Diana was especially targeted by the medieval church for being the queen of the witches, as I've talked about before. Um, and her shrines and sacred groves were systematically destroyed by zealous monks intent on wiping out the vestige of paganism in Europe. A huge synchronicity is apparent that in Diana's consort was, yes, Dianus, also known as Janus. According to Doreen 
Valiant, which is still called by the name of Jana and Janara, which is in Italy, the, the clan. The first month of our calendar is called in his honour, and he is a green man of the woods whose visage is still found in sculpture and gardens and murals even today, and are found in churches and everywhere. Um, the pagan horn god is in all guises, is not an evil spirit invented by the Catholic Church to create a schism between people and make them different from one another, but actually the phallic god of the underworld and nature, a doorkeeper between worlds of the threshold between life and death. He is Osiris and our set is a complementary polar opposite and equal. So they, that's just what this guy, lady or gents who's done this have done. As with other deities, Janus has two aspects of life and death, masculine and fem, feminine, day and night, light and darkness, the yin yang, the good of the witches, and not a psychotic being torn apart by two halves, one absolutely good and the other horribly evil. The version of Janus is in a viewpoint man-made, reflects the warped values of patriarchal society only. Pagan witches know who the real god of nature is. Um, so that is this guy's opinion. But what's interesting is just the name Janikos and the satyr and that aspect of the horn god. Because then you have to bring in Baal and all that, which I've talked about in a long time. Um, that was just from the evidence that I found and my research. Now I know why, because of the horn aspect. So guys, hopefully you're enjoying it so far. There's some wow information. Text it even deeper. Uh, deeper than that, I know anyone other channels have gone, and we're showing you each aspect to Janice, different gods, different names, and hopefully at the end of my thoughts, I can come to some form of conclusion. I just hope it. But guys, the main thing is to enjoy the information. Right, guys, thank you so far. This was in my last video, so I'm going to read a little bit out, but it says it was widely believed that the worship of the God preceded the establishment of Rome itself, making Janus one of the rare and antique indigenous gods not borrowed from the Greeks. His cult is shrouded in a good deal of mystery and his attributes seem to link him closely to Kronos and Saturn, whom he may have been the original indigenous version of. So that's why I've included that and a few rare pictures of Kronos with multiple heads. So there you go, guys. Janus as Kronos, which is indicative because he's also his father. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> also include it. And uh, while we're talking about Kronos and Janus together, this is what I came across while researching. So I, I had to show it just because the ironic having Kronos and Janus and it's a smart Android smartwatch. So I'm just sharing this with you guys too. The god form of Janus remained Holy Roman. With no Greek counterpart, he evolved from Dionysus, as we've talked about, and oh god, interestingly enough, Janus is also associated with Lucifer, another fire and light deity. Janus guarded the entryways to every Roman home and the gates of every Roman city. So there is just someone talking about how they've tied Lucifer to Janus. This is Lugos, or Lugos, or Lug, or Lug, goes by many names, one of the main Irish gods, and as you can see, he has many heads. Now, this is guilt by association, he is being also associated with um, Apollo, so you can see why I've tagged him together, because if he's Apollo, and I'm sure Apollo could be Janice too, there's also an island in, an island in Ireland called Boa Island, and they state they are Janice figures. Could they be Lugos? But they emphasize on the Janice. So that's just a strange little connection I thought I'd connect. And there you go, there's L. I have not seen many people mention the Men Shen as Janice, 
the entity is Janus, but obviously you can see the 11, the two, the two aspects of the gods who protect the doors. Uh, just thought I'd include this, yes, and not only a little, and there's virtually nothing on it in regard to Janus, it's just what a few people have been saying. Some say Noah is Janice, or was Janice. And I'm gonna be reading some stuff out from books just to show you this and other stuff to corroborate. This is from a, an old book. Like Noah's Ark in the Old Testament, the ship on ancient coins of Janice was held by Christians to foreshadow the symbolic ship of the Christian church. And Janice, Noah's choice to settle opposite Rome on the left bank of the Tiber, prefigured St. Peter's association with the Vatican because Janus was the first Pontifact Maximus, he was also in effect the first Pope and Peter is his successor. Peter's keys preserved Janus Noah's ancient association with doors. Here's the coin I was just talking about, two first Janus and the ship representing the church and whatnot on the other side. The article that I'm just going to read now is talking about Sadly, even though Noah himself was deified after his death, he became known to the Romans as the god Janus, who presided over everything. They depicted him as having two faces, one which looked forward into the future and the other which looked backward into the past before the flood. The imagery involved into his being, the god of doors and gates, each of which had two sides. He his image appeared on the bronze and silver coins of the Roman Empire for about 300 years. Ironically, the observe of some of these coins depicted a great ship. The key to the identity of Janus Snower was given to us by Giovanni Nanni, aka Annius of Viterbe, in his commentaries published in 1498 after a lifetime of research into the ancient culture of northern Italy, he announced that Janus, one of the early kings of Italy, was none other than Noah himself. From his relevant revelation, accounts of the king's accomplishments begin to emerge. It was a key that unlocked an entire arena of ancient history that had been obscured for centuries. It also led to the identification of other biblical personalities that were known in mythology. He discovered the fascinating story about Noah's establishment and the first kingdoms of the ancient world, focus, focusing primarily on the early kingdoms of Europe. Annius pieced together a gripping historical event for almost unknown period of prehistory. He paints a coherent account of Noah's work after the flood, namely the establishment of the first colonies of the earliest nations. About about a century later, Annius' work was redacted by a London ne Londoner named Richard Ly Ly Lynch, Noah, founder of Civilizations, in a modern English account of more recent works, which was later published in 1601. It details the last 355 years of 350 years of no life of Noah, and the extraordinary work that he co accomplished in establishing new society from the verge of oblivion. It also traces some early kingdoms from the beginning through the next several centuries until classical times. So that is just some, some of the stuff that I found through friends on Janus being Noah. Here's a little piece out of a book, Noah, Italy and the Sea Peoples, the problem. In his Origini Dalla Lingua Friontina, originally published in 1548, Pier Francesca Giambellara makes an astonishing claim that the language of Dante takes its origin from Hebrew, brought to Italy by Noah, the inventor of wine, who was known as Janus, settled and died there. This belief is repeated by Fabricus in the Codex of the Old Testament in 1713, and the same story again by Fuchs writing in 1849. Um, so that was just a little snippet just to show you what I'm talking about, how Noah and Janice are linked. In my Island of the Gods video, I talk about an island shaped like a ship in Rome, in the heart of Rome. As you can see, river, the river Tiber there. And at the time, I didn't research about the Pantheon and it's linked to the pineal gland, which is a secret name for Janice. 
look there is a pantheon in the pinecone district and there you go there is an island ship like a ship it was even built like a ship i'm going to show you some images straight after this but some myths say it's just made by you know sediment and some believe it's a ship of noah that as i was talking about before in the passages came to italy and this is where it settled or it got um docks because there was a port nearby at the time and this island in my video island of the gods what's significant is this island was just full of temples to different gods um and i want to show you something interesting too that was in the video but i'll show you in pictures now coming up but it's so interesting that they're talking about janice as noah and there's a, a, sh a ship ship <laughs> shaped island in the pinecone district named after janice just thought that was interesting to show you guys as you can see tyber island shaped like a ship right guys thank you so far here's some old images that i found in the original video i did on islands of the gods as you can see the island shaped it was actually designed and put in marble as well to look like a ship as you can see temples and, and whatnot looks really really beautiful and surreal this is a, like a 3d model of what it would have looked like but what's interesting is these are the two oldest bridges in rome either side and have a guess who's on it hmm janice <laughs> but as that other people in them articles were saying they had two heads the original janice had four heads and over the times it got whittled down to two but there you go the four-headed janice on the bridge to the island of the gods that could be the ship of Noah not the ark but a ship of Noah where he stopped and created well what I've just gone through so as you can see it's an interesting link as well another one that you might have not heard of as Janice as Noah and Noah as Janice now this one is slim guys very 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 slim <laughs> But if someone else mentions it, I'm pouring it in. Because <laughs> obviously there's going to be some letters where, you know, the connection is zero or, you know, just over zero. But you remember Boar Island and the Janus figure? Well, the opposite side of that figure, the figure appears to be holding something. But it's not clear what it might be. It's believed that the statue and the female side of the Janus statue have a tongue sticking out, which is believed to be a symbol of divinity and also associated with Odin. However, in medieval times, it became a symbol for lust. So there is that link to Odin and Janice. Uh, another name for Odin is the All Father. Janice has a few. He is Ionus Pater, meaning Janice Father, but also Pater Matutinus, Father of the Morning, Son of Light, hence the link to Lucifer, came before Jupiter and all the other Roman gods that the modern world so readily remembers. Janice is the god of gods. Janice came to Rome from the ancient Italic Sabine tribes who inhabited the areas of Lazio, Umbria and Abruzzi, Abruzzi in northern Italy. So there is a small little link again just with the names of father. And in this one is Osiris but this is, oh, this is only just a couple of figures that has been found with Osiris as the Apis and obviously Osiris on the other side and it replicates the famous Roman god Janice statue of when he is horned. So there is a, a very, very slim, is it just symbolic of the Janice aspect of two, more than one head? Probably, but it's still a link to the two-headed god Janice. And people say, yeah, Janice had four or three heads. Yes, I know it all is, but I'm just showing you there is a small, slight link between this. As you see, Portunus, aka Port, the gateways and their portals. You heard me talk about these so many times, but as you can see, the Janus aspect of Portunis. And this is another while for me, especially when we had the Evergreen and the Ever Given lately about blocking the uh, canal. But his attribute was a key in his main temple in the city of Rome. The temple of Portunus was to be found in the Forum Borum. 
Petunius appears to be closely related to the god Janus, with whom he shares many characteristics or characters, functions, and the symbol of the key. So they're both tied together. He does the doorways and portals of the sea. Just thought I'd share that with you guys. And what's interesting is this is just a screenshot. I've, I posted this the other day on my social media and it's US maritime security and the concept is called the Petunis concept. So they're talking about a defense from ports and this is visualizing what could be. But just look at the name Petunis. And we know this is Janice, another alias. So just thought it was interesting and I had to include just to show you guys. In Roman mythology and religion, Quirinus is an early god of the Roman state. In Augustan Rome, Quirinus was also an effiat of Janus as Janus Quirinus. It was the will of our ancestors that the gateway of, of Ionus or Janus Quirinus should be shut when victories had secured peace by land and sea throughout the whole empire of the Roman people. From the foundation of the city down to the birth, tradition records that it was shut only twice. But while I was the leading citizen, the Senate resolved that it should be shut on three occasions. Closing of the doors of the temple of Janus Quirinus. And in Q, he also goes by Janus Quadifrons. Because of the four faces and the four arches of his arch. This is the arch of Janus. And as you see, it has four entrances to do with four directions. And it's the only one left in Rome intact. Obviously, he had four faces because this is on the island of the, the gods, as I showed before. And for you Harry Potter fans who watch me, Professor Quirrell, his actual full name is Quirinus Quirrell, obviously associated with Janus. And obviously, if you've ever watched the film, if not, I'll show you a picture now. The evil Voldemort is actually entombed in the back of his head doing the Janus aspect. Can't get any more in your face than that, guys. And I just thought I'd share that with you. The rebus and alch alchemical symbol representing the androgynous and also the mystery of the god Janus. Though there were variations of this depiction such as two bearded men or two clean shaven men, later de depictions showed him as one male and one female face and this was popular in alchemy and was depicted as the rebus which was the end product of the magnus opus of alchemy so there's the connection guys and what i thought was interesting was there is a book called the image of the gods by vincenzo cantara and just look at what number they decided to put the rebus or janus on yep none other than page 33. can't make that up can you and i just thought i'd do include this so here you have our Rebus and Janus. A fake ritual killing filmed in a courtyard at CERN. The Geneva Particle Physics Research Complex has prompted an investigation. A spokesman suggested users of the facility had let their humour go too far and warned of the potential for misunderstanding about the scientific nature of our research. Look at the hands on the clock. They rest at 10.10, Shiva's hands. Can't be a coincidence, that. Thus, we see that Janice represents he who is not only the master of triple time, 
the past, the future, the present, a designation that Hinduism also applies to Shiva. Then we have Cern, which is Cern in us, who is Janice, the one in the same. people think Terminus is Janus because they do similar jobs. Terminus is the god of boundaries and markers and as you know Janus one of his jobs is transitions so it would be from one place to another so it is he has to be Terminus too but you know it's like anything I've done in this video it's hard to find in writing other people agreeing but he's asking this, the question here because uh, they're thinking the same as a lot of people have. Who then is Janice with whom Varro commences? And this is in Bible Hub, by the way. You can see Bible Hub. Um, who uh, Varro commences? He is the world. Certainly a very brief and unambiguous reply. Why then do they say that the beginnings of things pertain to him, but the ends to another whom they call Terminus? For they say that two months has been dedicated to two gods with reference to beginnings and ends. Janus to January and February to Terminus. Over above those ten months which commence with March and end in December. And they say that is the reason why the Terminalia are celebrated in the month of February. The same month in which the sacred purification is made which they call Februm and from which the month derives its name. Do beginnings of things therefore pertain to the world, which is Janus, and not also the ends? See, it's not the first time we've referred to the world as Janus. And, not also, and also the ends, since another god has been placed over them. Do they not own that all things which they say begin in this world also come to an end in this world? What folly it is to give him only half power in work when in his image they give him two faces. Would it not be a far more elegant way of interpreting the two-faced image to say that Janus and Terminus are the same and that the one face has reference to beginnings and the others to ends? For one who works ought to have respect for both, for he who in every fourth putting of activity does not look back at the beginning, does not look forward to the end, were for it is necessary that the prospective intention be connected and retrospective memory for how shall one find how to finish anything if he has forgotten what was which had he begun but if they thought that the blessed life begun in this world and perfected beyond the world and for that reason attributed to janice that is to the world not only oh sorry only the power of beginnings they should certainly have preferred Terminus to him, and should not have shut him out from a number of the selective gods. Yet even now when the beginnings and ends of temporal things are represented by two gods, more honour ought to have been given to Terminus, for the greater joy is that which is felt with anything is finished. But things begin are always cause of much anxiety until they are brought to an end. Which end who begins anything very greatly longs? Which end he which end he who begins anything very greatly longs for fixes his mind on expe you know expects desires nor does any ever rejoice nor anything has begun unless it is brought to an end. So these people are just asking the question, wouldn't it be more plausible that these people are the same and when people drive Janice is the beginning and ends because he's looking both ways Terminus is just the action and part of Janice because Janice is just a name you know I've always said the entity behind that is you know bigger Janice is just his Roman name so to me it seems much sense that Terminus is a part of Janice and something's coming now that I found a Terminus marker that shows just that very thing
And here you go, here you go guys, here's that boundary marker which you're talking you from 1574 showing a double headed Janus aspect to Terminus. So go along what everyone's saying. Now, the saying, end of the line, this is in reference to Terminus, the boundaries. So when you've heard the saying in the past and you've said it, you come into the end of the line, even on a bus, on bus from a bus terminal, it is to God, Terminus, aka Janus. Welcome to the world of contradictory gods. <laughs> yes, I've said Kronos has been linked to Janus for obviously reasons. And now I'm saying Uranus or Uranus is tied to Janus. So you can quite say it is proof saying that the Greek Uranus is Janus, as you can see. And on this as well, it also says he is Noah and uh, Janus. So you can just say it all ties together. But, and that's the contradictory of his story. So, you know what I mean? This is video just about me showing is there any links to gods from A to Z? And this is just a link. A lot of people have said they are one in the same because he's the first god. But, you know, you can take anything with a pinch of salt in regard to history. Vesta is the virgin goddess of the hearth, the home and family in Roman religion. She was rarely depicted in human form and was often represented, represented by the fire of the temple in the Forum Romanum. She's tied, obviously, because the doors, the thresholds involved the home. And Janus and Vesta, the rites, the rites concerning Janus were numerous. Any rite or religious act, whatever, required the invocation of Janus first with a corresponding invocation to Vesta at the end, Janus Primus and Vesta Extrema. So both together. And you've seen some weird stuff, I mean, not Janus Vesta tied together on some logo here, brand, even via uh, XR, via virtual reality, Janus XR and Vesta, same together. And in reality, if it was, it was reality, you have Janus's, Janus's Ark and just to the right, Vesta's temple. So they're both tied together. Vejo Passis, something pronounced like that. I don't know if it's a V or a W. This one says W, but I'm assuming it'll be a V. Um, but it's going in as W because that's what I can see <laughs> pronounced. But as you can see, it's a print published in the 17th century representing a man with a biphallic head, wings and a rooster on his head. One of his hands holds an undefined object while the other supports a fish. It represents Bepicis or Vejopatis, the Prussian god of wind. For more than a century, America has been colonised, the press was widespread in Europe, but Christianity had not yet conquered all Europe. And in some areas, as, the, as Prussia, a uh, bicephalic god was still worshipped. This is further testimony how deeply religions are rooted in peoples according to the typology of the philitic sculptures. This god, having wings, can be considered a human-animal hybrid. So as you can see, and what's interesting is you have the, t the fish. Janus is tied to the fish as well because he was the first Pope, a holy see, and he was also pictured with a cock. I've showed you that many, many times. If you remember, I'll put it in now on the screen coming down. And that could be, I know it's not shaped properly, it could be a drum or it could be a weird shaped crown Pope tiara. Who knows? But it's similar to the rebus that we've included in this. So there is W. Well, guys, this might look a stretch. Well, it is a little bit, <laughs> but I'm getting to X. Come on, it's X. Uh, this is uh, Zhai Wang Mu or Zhi Wang Mu. She is a Chinese goddess of immortality and personifies the female or the feminine yin. 
Yi Wang Mu has a nine story jade palace in the Kunlun Mountains where male immortals live in the right wing and females in the left. As you know, Janice is known as immortality but also duality. Hence, he's got, you know, I know he's got more than one head, but you know, the two heads. And we can see various things. I can find Lord calling Janice the duality. So, though he's also, I've seen somewhere uh, he's been called Yin Yang. And I'm trying to find it, I can't find it, but I'm, so I'm just showing you the duality of Janice through technology and other things and science now, where they're using him in nanoparticles and different things, as you can see above. So, it's just crazy that. I'm getting near the end and it's hard. I mean, it's X and we're gonna find a God with X and I've just found one and it's about duality and Janice is duality. So yeah, it is a far stretch like a, a, the odd one has been, but I wanna finish it. <laughs> I wanna see if I can get through to A to Z with at least some connection and I believe I've done it with this. Even though it's small, tiny, way, way out there. I've still got it and shown it. I pronounce things wrong all the time. I can barely speak English. And as you can see, I am even pronouncing Janus because it's Janus. Janus. It's pronounced with a Y. So I'm not going to put loads and loads of Janus heads in or on things because we all know who Janus is. And yes, this is a bit weak for a Y, but I'm getting near the end now. And like I said, I want it finished because I've got I want to put a little bit of a little extra stuff at the end of this so why is the actual correct pronunciation of Janus as Janus with a Y so we were made in God's image right so according to Greek mythology humans were once originally created with four arms four legs and a head with two faces the Janice aspect and fearing their power Zeus split them into two separate parts condemning them to spend their lives in search of the other halves doesn't say he created he said he split so what if because there's contradiction information that Janice is Zeus Zeus is Janice Janice is Zeus's father Zeus is Janice's father see it's all contradictory but as you can see, he waved his magic finger and split people in half. This is where the story of soulmates comes from. And we are searching for our soulmates throughout history because Zeus split us. But like that him before, lesser known to his connection to the Roman god beginnings and endings, Janice, the survival of Proclus's hymn to Hecate and Janice provided a little insight into what the relationship may have been like because it included Zeus. Why put Zeus in there? And there is that hymn that I showed you before. So this is the, the, the hypocritical nature of these gods and different entities and people's research. We all see different things, so that becomes history. So that's why I did A to Z, just showing you a different opinion. Some of them are way out there, some of them are not. But as you can see, two heads are better than one, as they say. And who knows? So hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'm gonna do a little bit of extra now. In this, I'm just going to show you some interesting things I've found lately, also with some good oldies. So hopefully you've enjoyed the complete package. It's something different. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Bye, guys. This is at Judgment Day. Um, it's an artist, I can't remember who it was, but you can see the angel looking down and look at how many heads the angel has Two. So I just thought I'd include that because I just think it's interesting. This is Project Janice. It's a program for facial recognition and IARPA are actually making it or, or have made it. It's the Intelligence Advanced Research Projects Activity. It's an organisation within the Office of Director of National Intelligence responsible for leading research to overcome difficulty, challenge, blah, blah, blah. That's what they say. So there you go, guys. Project Janice. So a lot of people have been talking about this asteroid and nasa's suppose because we know what nasa's like but the psyche spacecraft which will explore an asteroid worth 10 quintillion but they forget to say hmm it'd be going with another one called janice it's a janice project oh wait 
Janice is a planned dual space probe that will visit two binary asteroids. The mission is expected to be launched in August 2022 as a secondary payload on the Falcon Heavy together with a Psyche space probe and to arrive at two binary asteroids in 2026. See, that's what they say. People <laughs> laugh and mock when I do my research on Janice. And it is fair enough because people don't understand. But you can just see the implications. Just as this video and just even at these little bits, the inclusion of this name because it's it's a god of doorways and transitions and so 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 much so it's a ritual they need to put in so you can just see the mission to this biggest ever asteroid worth 10 quintillion yeah it's going with janice just thought i'd put that in and i just thought it was in interesting not to we know janice is a god of archways amongst so many stuff and we know the most famous arches is the McDonald's Golden Arches, the Twin Arches. Now, when they opened a new university called Hamburger University, just look, it's coincidentally that they picked and selected Janice displays to use at the university. Just a coincidence, that, guys. And here's a meme I made, and I wouldn't got, I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling black sheep. <laughs> and I made it from the Scooby-Doo, obviously, and how they get away, you know, the meddling kids. And I just put Janice there because people just make fun of me. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to have a laugh at myself because that's the best way. And I made this meme and people really enjoyed it. Many times in my videos, it talks about Bill Gates being tied to Janice for obvious reasons. The name, Gates. But look, look at the code name for one of the Windows projects. We know Windows are... What are they? Come on. They're the entrances to the soul. But just look. The code name for this Windows project was Janus or Janus or Janus as we need to know now. So you can just see it is everywhere and it's important. So Bill Gates is tied to Janus through his name, obviously. Portas. After Latin for Gates. But just look at his advisor. He can, he can have any advisor. But this advice is called Kathleen Kelly Janus or Janus. Tell me that is not a coincidence that one of his senior advisors on social innovation is called Janus or Janus. I, I, I think that was just like, say what type of moment personally. So Bill Gates, Microsoft's um, answer to Apple, Apple Play, you know, iTunes was Zoom. Now this was in a magazine and a butt of all jokes, no pun intended, but there is Zoom. And this magazine reversed it. And it spells anus. Well, there we go, Janus, Janus. It's anus, and people have always said that. But look closely. Microsoft worked with media producers to design a comprehensive technology framework for the DRM system, named after Janus. The Roman god of beginnings and endings and namesakes of January, who was portrayed with two faces that looked into both the past and the future. Like its namesake, Microsoft Janus, Janus planned to keep its eye on everything with airtight solutions for the paranoid entertainment industry that would allow them to both sell and rent and lock down digital files. Rented files could be set to play back for a certain time period of number of players and then self-destruct. So the actual application behind the Zune, Anus, was none other than Janus, Janus, Janus. No coincidences now, guys. You can just see what I always look into, and it just makes you, you, you draw a job. So I'm researching, as I do, and I find Janice Clothing, Pioneers of Fashion. I'm like, okay, that's unusual name of the brand. But then at a spot, just look at the activity on the account. Anyone familiar? Hmm, Bill Gates. Well, Culture Built and Melinda Gates Foundation. Activity on Janice Clothing. That cannot be a coincidence. So again, here's another big what if. Because I just like looking and talking of things differently. So don't get triggered by this for anyone who's researched this. This is just, you know, I'm asking these questions. Sometimes it can be just as simple as rearranging letters. Now look at the Jesuit seal. It has a certain person on it. Oh yeah, Janus. So no connection there. He never used to be the first Pope or anything like that. So what, he, he's no reason to be on there. And the IHS is, is known to be very things. Plus the, the Greek 
you know, monogram for, for Jesus. But what, it, and we always talk about, oh, well, history is a lie. It's his story. Well, I've been shouting out for so long now about the great vow L shift, the great vow to God, the shift. It happened in the 13th century to the late 18th, where they changed the language to speaking the vowels, everything. Everything got changed in that time period. The calendar, everything. So what if we just rearrange IHS? What does it spell? It spells his. H-I-S. I -I I-H-S, anagram of his story, history. So when we're talking about history being changed by the Jesuits, the Black Pope, and all the collaborations of Cabal, and they put IHS, could it just be as simple as his story? It, it is a cha it, they changed the vow, vow L's, the vow to God. They, sw they swapped all everything. And if we are talking about a reset, and you saw my videos on the great va vowel shift, I, I always say vowel, vow to L, vow to God. And they're talking about his story. They changed it for a reason. They made him January. They moved these months to become the first. So it's, it was for him, his story. So are we looking at the history now as being his story? And that is why Janice appears everywhere in various forms, because it's his story just a theory guys <laughs> you can take it for what you want i'm just on it it was interesting and just tied into a lot of things that we, we talk about In occultism, the pineal gland is regarded as a link between the objective and the subjective states of consciousness, or in exoteric terminology, the visible and invisible worlds of nature. In the religions of the Latins, it was therefore referred to as Janus, the two-faced god and keeper of the gates of sanctuary. This div divinity was the antitype of Saint Peter. An antitype means a person or a thing that represents the opposite of or someone or something else. Who succeeded him as the warder of the heavenly portals and who carries the two keys of his office. One to the golden mystery of the spirit and the other to the silver mystery of the body. The two faced gods are frequently spoken of in ancient and I'll carry on in a sec. <laughs> That's just the first part. So that'd be ancient records. Hermia, like the Pifrons Janus, may still be seen in old Roman villas, with the occasional and intriguing exception that one of his the faces will be male and female. The her amaphroditus again, the female face represents the animal soul, the male the divine soul, and the whole figure is indicative or indicative of the occult structure and function of the pineal gland. Gould and his my mythical monsters give several examples drawn from the earliest writings of the Chinese Hindu mythology and also in polyphalicious divinities and from the far off Tibetans we learn that one of the titles of Avalokitesa's surveyor, <laughs> pardon me for the pronunciation, is Samantra Mukha. He whose face looks every way. There is an alch alchemical mystery also in connection with the pineal gland, for the regeneration of man is dependent upon the, t the tincturing of the gland, which must be transmuted from base metal into gold. Unawakened by Kundalini, the pineal gland is a vehicle of karma manners, the animal mind, Aphrodite, but when tinctured by the spiritual light, it becomes Buddha manners. The divine mind, Hermes. This Buddha manners is the thoth of the later Egyptian mysteries, the god of learning and letters, and according to the extravagant statements of his priest, the source of 26,000 books. So this just blew me away, guys. You know I've looked into Janus for a long time. I've now linked Janus in the religion of the Latins, or part of you know, the Italian and Eastern Europe, calling the pineal gland Janus. And it makes so much sense when you look at it how it's connecting both realities and space and time the pineal gland is called a janus <laughs> that just blew me away yeah, 
they call me the black sheep. You know they call me the black sheep. I'm running wild while you're asleep. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Hello. Right, guys. What, what, what do you think of that? I just wanted to make something different on Janus or Janus or oh, so many names. Now, people can say, oh, no, they're not this. It's not this. Listen, I'm just showing you evidence that I've found. If you can't handle it, it's up to you. It's like information and the word history. It's like things have changed. I, Like I said in the video, I started researching this a few years ago and there was no information on it whatsoever. Now you type in and put Janice in business, in for something and people are talking being connected. Now you might say it is a liminal god, meaning threshold or, you know, transitional god. And I quite be, I've always said Janice is just his Roman name. And people always say, oh, Janice is not important. You can see Janice is important. Hence the Bill Gates link, just on its own. In just that little bit of bonus material, you can just see... He's actually looking for his own connections to that name. You should say it enough. So when you're watching this video, and I do, and I, you know what I mean? You got, guys know, <laughs> I'm honest. I'll hold my hands up. Some of them were a bit, what's the word? A bit tight, the link. But you can see why I had to put it in. Not just to, to fill the gap, but to actually show you, yes, even though some of them are tight, I could do from A to Z with connections. It's not necessarily just Janice's other names. I've left I've left so many out. Cush. There's there's loads. Apollyon. Because there's another version of, of Apollo because he used to be above the doors. So there is so many names I've missed out because it'll take too long. It's already took me two and a bit of weeks to make this. It's just so much editing, so much research, getting stuff in, compiled together. And you get to the stage where you enjoy making it, but you just want it finished. And that's what I was getting to. Just, oh, oh my God, let me, I'll bet I've missed them out. And I, I might have missed the odd letter out, but who knows? But we can only try, can't we? I, I want to make something good for you people to watch. You, you know, you use your own spare time to sit down or watch or run or whatever you do when, you, when I'm on the screen. And, you know, I want to make something good for you. And if, if you like it, please thumbs up. If you like anything on the, on, on the channel, give it a thumbs up. Like, share, tell people to come over and watch. But a good bunch on here. I keep getting, like I always say, I get, keep getting messaged and saying how well the chat is, how well they get made to feel like part of the family. And that is something humbling and proud. And to be honest, you will not get on any other channel. <laughs> and I mean that because... I've witnessed it myself and that is something that makes me very emotional and proud of that you guys decide to come on treat people who come in for the first time or recording people and make it part of the family so you know give yourself a pat on the back so this is something I want to do as a as a personal challenge a lot more people are researching Janice now because of my efforts in it and that's not like saying Ooh, ego type of thing. It's not because everyone knows me. I've researched Janus, and I'm getting out. I'm showing you different things. So it's, it's speak. You know, it's piquing people's interest. So they're going researching now, and they're doing their alterations. Because remember, the truth is personal. It's you. And sometimes, like I said in this, you get caught in the rut, your little hole. And that is why, if you look at me, people say, "Oh, you only just researched Janice," and they're the egotistical shills and trolls because you only take two seconds to go and have a look at my videos, and you can just see the varied nature of what I research. And again, you know, I thank you guys for taking the time to watch it because you know you're helping and showing your support by watching it. And it means a lot. Some of you might not comment. And you just watch from the background and, I, you know, I thank you. You know, you guys don't get thanked enough because sometimes, you know, I like to thank the names personally and I don't know who's watching it. It's for you who are watching it, who never comment, thanks. You know, appreciate it for all that you do. So back to this. I just found it interesting. Now, this, for me, sounds like, you know, when people are talking about reality changes, 
how can information not be there and then be there if his story is not being changed? Because I have been there from dots researching this topic and I couldn't, you can see it from the first video I made. There's not much information on it, just the, the usual. Now you're getting him tied and linked and called Lucifer. People are talking about calling him as a demiurge. There's so many names I, I left out because I just wanted to do a nice flow of a video from A to Z. Some of the names, I say nine out of 10 of them are talked amongst people I've seen because of the efforts I put in and others, because it's not just me is researching this now. I'm, I'm putting the ideas out on the videos out. There's some people who's made videos on Janice years and years, years before me, but that was in the sense of him just being a God and not essentially the caretaker, the janitor of this realm. And my other videos like the time glass, Janice the many face gods. You can just see in my point, it's like they are here to appease him. So they're making more and more links, earning us to CERN. What are they actually doing? So these are questions I've, I've asked and maybe answered in other videos. So this is what you get. <laughs> you get in me showing you Janice other names for Janice as well. The stuff I even left out are, I think, pronunciation, because I can't pronounce English the best of times. I think it's um, Concevius, which is a god of the conceivement of having a child. It's Janice. I didn't put that in. So there's so many links where some of the letters were could have been like five, six, seven, eight gods, and then some of them are just one or two. And some is very hard, like the, obviously the X's and that. But you can see me point, what I'm trying to show in this video is just why has a God got so many connections? And that is the main point and the question I want to ask. So you people have watched this and watched my previous videos. And if not, you're just catching up on this one. You know, you can go back and look at the other videos. I have included some of my old videos in this. But it's just mind blowing. So you're talking about when you talk about Dante's Inferno, you get to hell, hell, and the Satan's got three heads. Satan in the Bible is known as the adversary, and it's always said that the Satan, the devil, or whatever you want to call it, has many names. Could Janice be Satan? Just drinking my tea <laughs> in, my, see, in my black sheet mug. <laughs> so um, that is all questions. I do believe he has a good aspect to it too because obviously I'm linked to duality. Some people don't believe in duality. Some people don't believe in this. And this is my point. We all believe in so much and we can see evidence for so much. How can that physically or spiritually be impossible? Because people don't ask that. If I can see this realm as this, and another person can see the realm as that, and this, this, and this, and you're going along, and it's like, how is that possible? How can people see different things? Again, it's to do with the truth. Being being a rut, being personal to you, that's why people get triggered, as well as being indoctrinated. We can see so many different things, because it's frequency-based. It affects the mind. People talk about, I see it so much on, on social media. Oh, let's activate our pineal gland, you know. And it's all this all this vibe. And, and all this, and they're talking about, oh, you decalcify the pineal gland. And you go, do you actually know what the occult hidden name for the pineal gland is? And when you mention it is Janus or Janus, crickets. People just don't want to know. I'm, I can only show you what I've been, what I've found, and people say, "Well, that's not true." Well, it's information. Where have you found your information in a book? Which that was from a book, the internet. Which that was from the internet. Can you see my point? Is all this information is out there? Who was the original person that told you? It's always his or her story. It's always personal. Some some guru. Some. Um, Lama, some spiritual person would come up with a theory on how life is according to him and people attach themselves to it and believe in that. 
So then when someone comes with a, a different v variant, it's, it's butting heads. Who's right, who's wrong? And that's what I always say. Who's the person to decide who's right and wrong on a theory? Just because it's got 10 people who like it to that two people doesn't mean that's right. Just means more, more people the herd has followed the sheep. Or it could be right. That's my, that's the whole point of me doing my videos. I love to do what if videos because I like to ask the questions because it triggers things in people who watch, which is an emotional response. We all have it. There's different types of triggers, the bad triggers, which is indoctrination, which is a spell and the ego. And then there's emotional triggers because have hit a nerve. Remember, researching is looking for information that you already know. We already know all this. You can call it the collective consciousness, the catchy records, the creation source, whatever you want it. People call it different things. They label it. Label. It's a song. It's a frequency. to bell to bow. Now, are you using someone else's connection? Like the internet you've hacked in. So you get in a corrupted state. Who knows? These are all things to ask. So when we're here, and we're talking about two heads are better than one, we're talking about Zeus. And when you read the, the, the thing to Zeus, it says he split them in half. He doesn't say he created them as two. Was there someone before him who created people with two heads in his image? That is something interesting because we see a lot of bisexual people, uh, Siamese twins, you know, two heads, animals the same. Are they all, are they genetic experiments or are they just a what we originally was because you know there's pictures of that big giant um going around with two heads and you can see lots of things like this so these are questions i want to ask in videos like this yes i do a lot of what ifs because what can i prove what i can prove is i can get a document or a, a piece of a book from the internet or in physical flesh show you that doesn't mean it's right that just mean it's someone's interpretation his story being written in a book <laughs> and you know like i always say you treat it as information that's why i don't give it any any, any bias i can just show you and sometimes you let your intuition your insights and it'll twing yeah that feels right you know what i mean but you can't physically portray that feeling you know i can only say i, I get that feeling that it may be right and that then hits someone else in that spot yeah i think you might be right because we do share a common source code <clears throat> so when we're doing videos like this like i said i'm just expanding <laughs> the catalog that's on me on my channel and people are always asking for more and more janice videos and i've never done a video like this and i know if people wanted me to say right go in a and then give a full depth in count on a and then b i haven't got the time it's took me two and a bit weeks just to do this uh, there's not enough time in the day, unfortunately. You know, I've got a occurring job. Um, and things, you know, generally pop up. Plus, I don't, I don't want to spend time in front of the computer 24-7 like I was. It was no good for my health. And like I said, I do this for the love of it. I do this for the, you know, to share knowledge because the comments I get back are outstanding. The interaction in the chat is second to none. People tell me, you know... <laughs> You need to, you know, have good brains to be in the chat and to understand it. But that's the beauty of it. <clears throat> Get into that time now, because like Alex said, I don't want to go too long. Right. <laughs> so back to this. <clears throat> so what you can think of the Janice link. Because I, I, oh, Janus. <laughs> but I'll see you right. I do believe there's an entity behind it and because this entity covers his bases and being linked to so many gods is really really contradictory I said it so many times in the video people be screaming oh it's not possible because this is this and this listen <laughs> the answer up I've actually told you in the chat I've seen posts linking certain gods with other gods and it's just the information that you get like I said, you could research anything and find evidence for whatever you want to do when you go and look at something. And that is just a part of that book and history. People won't like the fact that I've, I've turned IHS from the Jesuits into his story. Think about it. 
This this entity is behind Janus is being worshipped. I've showed you who's worshiping at Gates. All you know, all the cabal cabalists. He's linked to the that thing is you know the, I can't say the certain words because you've been getting taken down, but we know what's happened this, this past year, all to him. <coughs> I've shown it and shown it and shown it. And people are now <laughs> whether because they're just like, oh god, I'll have to have a look at this eventually because he's put so much information out and they're looking into it and, and you can see that's all I ever ask. You don't have to believe, you can just look. And if he doesn't text you, he doesn't text. But please always have respect for the work I've put in and the work for other people have put in to help me form formulate an idea. Never slam something. I never treat people with disrespect. I see a lot of it lately. It's absolutely disgusting how people who are supposed to be in a minority group treat other people in the groups. You know what I mean? You should be ashamed of yourself. You know, but then again, people are not these days. So, back to this. Doesn't it not intrigue you? That we're looking for clues and evidence to try and formulate this realm better for us. I talk about <coughs> Janice being the architect. It's like the Matrix. Who's in charge of the Matrix? The architect. The grand archon. You have, like, say, the Demiurge with a cockerel head. The cockerel is just associated with Peter. Peter. Peter meaning Father Janice. He's got the cockerel. He has the key. So you can see the influx of how history has been assimilated and it's his story. So this with the Jesuits, I just looked at it and thought, yes, I know it's an anagram in Greek for Jesus. And I can't say it in Greek, out or Latin. But just rearrange the letters. I-H-S. His. And then underneath the seal, it's him. His story. Because we always talk about his story. Well, who's is the history? Is it an elite organisation various organisations hell-bent on creating this realm into what they want to control us and, you know, have their way with, you know, everyone. You know, globalism created in Genoa. Genoa is named after him. Genoa has his name in the cathedral, talking how he is a progeny of giants. So you have all this, and that's where I first found him, in the cathedral in Genoa. Genoese flag is white with a red cross, which is the English flag. The English paid them to fly their flag. Then they moved to Switzerland because of the bank. Ended it. The first bank was actually in Geneva, not Geneva, Genoa. I always get it. And then you went to Geneva. So the the first banking cartel, they had to ask, they had to ask permission from the Council of the Ancients. Four guys, four heads. And they got permission to set up the first Rothschild State Bank, whatever you want to call it, called the Bank of St. George. George, England. George was the original name for the planet Uranus, but it got changed to Uranus, but it originally was George. So you see all these connections, the flag, St. George. St. George is Turkey, or wherever you want to say it. Wait. There used to be a colony of Genoa in Istanbul. Black Plague came from the steppes, you know, um, Mongolia, China way. They had a colony in there. I've showed you all this. Genoa, genocide, genome. So you can see the fun that you have with this, all tied to Genoa, which is named after Janus. So this in, insignificant god from all these people who troll, it goes a long way. You know, I can only show if you don't know, if you don't want to, you know, take the taking on board the information, dismiss it. That's up to you. You know, we're not a dictatorship here, unlike you guys who dictate what your subscribers or people have to look and research. I'm open to anything, and people who watch me are in the same. So you can see the links and how interesting it goes. And that is why I've always been fascinated with it because of the Genoa link and then the English f link. They went to Geneva. The flag is just opposite, red and white. It's the red background with a white cross. And then they left there and they went and set up the banking system in London City. The actual official London City separate entity, which that is the 33rd 
borough or council of London if he did county because it's separate is this county of 32 plus city of London city of London has markers with the dragons and it also has the flag the bank of the bank of England has Janus in it so you can see how intriguing it is and it goes way deeper than even me think overlooks this because you know you've got, you only got so much time in the day pardon me so yeah I sat there one day people are asking for more videos on Janice I'm thinking what can I do it's different I've done so many videos on it I think I've done about three or four videos on it more and more information it goes up the links to Noah links to um, in the name from the vine the wine it is really crazy right the first ship builder the first pope all this information i've shown you in in the videos how he appears with four heads on the island of gods which is a ship and then it got built into a ship to a marble beautiful i've done the island of gods video you should check that out it just makes you think what is and who's behind it and that's the whole point of the video can i highlight just how many names people are linking him to because it's not just me saying oh apollo is him you can say it i've used information that i found some of them i've like I said i've theorized on because of the liminal or threshold god type of thing because i believe it's just one god behind it and you can say oh it's not the god i'm just i'm calling it a lowercase god you know what i mean i don't know what's in i believe in a creator <laughs> you know what i mean you can call it whatever name people fight over names you know to me, the creator doesn't need a name. Yet when I've done my research and looked into this, God is named after the vowels. That makes you think, or is that Janice? The entity behind Janice. That is why they did the great vowel shift. The vowel shift. The, the vowel, the change in the vowels from one God to another. And that's the period that they changed the calendar, which moved January and Janice first. Added so many years on the calendar. You have I and J used. Janice changed the history to heliocentricism. All that was changed. I've done the video on the Great Vowel Shift. Check that out. So if they've moved and shift the entire language to how you spoke, because when you look into Gnosticism, which means knowledge, and that is tied to Janice, the ledge is part of the door. So, when you're talking about changing the language, changing the vowel, changing how we speak, Gnosticism talks about seven heavens, and you need to know all the words to get through each door to get to heaven. If not, you get reincarnated. So, if you were an evil villain, like I said in the video, you would change how you speak, because then how can you learn all the words? Because you then control school. So if you ch teaching people how to speak a different way, learn a different way, you're not going to learn every word or the code, the spells, the passwords to get through each door. Unless you go down our route. We are classes truthers or whatever you want to call yourselves. It's just a label. But when you look into something, we all see it uniquely because we all need to know each do password to each door differently. It's just a fascinating thing when you, you tie everything up together and then he's tied to the pineal gland. It is crazy how an entity, even just his Roman name, and you talk about Rome, all the roads lead to Rome. You can say Rome never existed. It doesn't matter because it's part of history. So you can say, oh, well, Rome didn't exist. It doesn't matter. In history, it existed because it's been wrote, it's been spelled into books and people are learning it so it's been put into history so it doesn't matter if you don't believe this this and this and this because it's part of all the spell part of the indoctrination and that is what the interesting thing is why i always look at things differently and why i always try to research and look at things against the grain because that's just who i am people don't research like me i don't research like you doesn't mean i'm better than you just means i'm different i'm unique and people need to accept that we're all unique to a degree and enjoy what different people bring to the table. It's like you're having a having a party. I know we can in these times, you know what I mean? But I, I still would. 
<laughs> um, and you bring in a, a food to the table, you know, like you do, and you're having a barbecue or something, people, guests bring over a dish. Can you imagine you, you're inviting 20, 30 people and they all bring the same dish? It's going to be a bit... <sighs> now, if you bring a different dish, you're giving yourself options. And this is what this community lacks. You go into a group, if you're a new person, you, you, into looking into a topic, automatically, when you... Nine times out of ten, we're all different. I mean, I, I, I didn't do it as much. But you sometimes do fall into the trap of going into a group and whoever shouts the loudest, you do look at. Because they're making the most noise and you're thinking, wow, they're making a lot of noise. They must know what they're talking about. And nine times out of ten, it's a lot of bollocks. It's because they don't know anything. That's why they shout the loudest. And it's how you treat people. For some reason, people like to be treated like shit. And because it's the truth, it doesn't matter. But it's bollocks. You don't have to be treated badly because of the truth remember the truth is personal it's just an ingoing and in searching battle and journey for yourself you don't have to be taught to treat you like shit it's hard enough as it is it's them and us that's all it should be them and us and them is the cabalists the evil and it's not it's like them us and friends and separate groups and that is that's the problem and all these channels and people are always talking about Hey guys, let's get a commune and get us all built together and let's just talk together. That's the worst thing, in my opinion, that you can do. You're detaching yourself from the source of other people. Because if you're living in a commune and you're all whispering and doing all your little talks together, it's just an echo chamber. And anyone who doesn't fit into echo chamber gets kicked out. But you're just in an echo chamber. You need to have a different opinion and you need people, an influx of new ideas constantly. So you, you, it's better to be still a part to the system, yet detached a bit. So you need a bit of both. You can't just detach completely and sit in the field and commune and that. It doesn't work for me because you're just going to hear the same ideas. You need to be somewhere in the middle, on the outskirts, as, as you say. But you used to know, remember, remember what the people on the outskirts were named pagans and that has been t coined because these people lived in the country just out of society's reach didn't follow the main religions and bang they get referred to as paganism and people say oh poor paganism is bad pa pa paganism isn't bad people are bad people just don't look at that so if i hurt your feelings and that i don't care because I'm sick tonight of everything being all oh, pagan associated with bad. People are bad. People what make things bad. You have a beautiful scenery, a beautiful patch of land. You put a good person in, the land flourishes, grows beautiful. You put the wrong person in, it dies and withers and becomes evil. It's a person. You can get good Catholics, bad Catholics, get good pagans, bad pagans, good pagans. You can get good you know, of everything, it's good and bad. Of everything. And that's the only point I, I want to, you know, influx to this. But remember, people like to attach labels to you straight away. Like me. My channel gets hit hard. I don't see comments. Um, and I can guarantee that, you know, majority of you come across me by just someone saying, come on, have a look at him. Or just by accident. I don't get talked about in the, the community as much because I like to be neutral. I like to be try and be friends with everyone because if you treat me with respect, I will treat you with respect. And I know, I, I'm old school like that. And I don't like when people say you shouldn't be friends with these people because I'm not friends with them. Because you're not friends with them. Grow up. It's just you're not friends with them. You should never, and I've never ever said it. I don't think I have. Fruff will, you know what I mean? Said to someone, especially in the modern era, and I want to do YouTube and that, or growing up into an adult. You might have said it when you're a kid, but exactly, you're a child. But one of my point is, you should never say to someone, don't follow them, don't look at them, because I don't like them. You have to sometimes let people experience it and look into itself. Yes, it might drive you mad because you know what the people are like, and you trying to want to save someone the journey of doing it, but we learn through experience, unfortunately. So the point of this video, being it's sidetracked and waffling on, is 
there has to be an entity, whether he's named or not, is behind all the liminal gods. Because as we know, history is just rehashed. And whether there was a, a, one the one god or was there a different type of god with a different name and it's completely been wiped out. That's what the p problem is. There's not enough oral history. And sometimes the, the danger of oral history, it's like Chinese whispers, it will get changed. If you say one god to, you know, your child, he then passes on to his child and he changes the pronunciation, it gets changed. There's no way of retracking it. But we can see the point of the video. I just wanted to connect and make a video of A to Z and not everything that connects is with Janice in it. I believe I've done it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Yes, I did waffle on for a bit, but oh my God, it's my platform and I've not been out for a few weeks. So I've pent up enthusiasm to get the message out to you guys. Hopefully you're staying safe. Hopefully you're smiling in this time. Um, take care, be good to one another. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, what can I do? Oh, <laughs> don't break it. But whatever you do, have a great day. <laughs> Take care and remember, always smile. <laughs> Bye guys.